The Detroit Lions fired defensive back coach Aubrey Pleasant. Now, if you've seen on my personal channel, I did do a quick breaking news. This, I'm going to talk about it a little more in depth instead of just a four-minute video. But before we get into this channel, hit that subscribe button. Love to get to 5,000 subscribers on Lions Nation Unite where we talk all Detroit Lions with legends such as Herman Moore. We've had Jason Hansen on here, Lomas Brown. This is what it's all about. Smash that subscribe button. Let's begin. Aubrey Pleasant, no longer with the Detroit Lions. Instant reaction to this, at least from my perspective. I'm curious to see what you guys think, so let me know in the comment section. Was This was kind of a cop-out move. Now, when you look at the secondary, yes, 100% it, was, it has been abysmal. It's been abysmal for two years, but is the secondary the main problem? Are they the reason why is it solely them? If you look at secondaries, generally, you know, if you don't have a defensive line that can get to the quarterback, get pressure, it really strains the secondary. It makes you guys, those players, look a lot worse than what they are. And in all honesty, if you look at this defensive line, they have barely put any pressure on quarterbacks. Every once in a while in a game, we get some plays like that, but... So far, the most part, it's been absolutely non-existent, and I think that's putting a lot of pressure on this secondary. I think that's one of the reasons that we have it now. Jeffrey Akuda's actually played pretty well this year. A lot of injuries. Melifonwu injured. You have Amani Awarie, an absolute regression there. Zero excuses for him, but Jerry Jacobs has been injured for the Detroit Lions, a guy who we picked up last year as an undrafted free agent, and I thought his development was pretty damn square. Same with Chase Chase Lucas, a guy we picked up in the seventh round. Kirby Joseph developing fairly well. All honesty, I look at this secondary, I think it has a lot to do with injuries and lack of talent. Tracy Walker going down. To me, it does feel like a cop-out, and I'm, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. Blame definitely could go towards Opry Pleasant, but when you don't have a linebacking core doing pretty much anything, you don't have a defensive line getting any sort of pressure, does anyone on planet Earth expect Will Harris to be able to cover Tariq Hill or Jalen Waddell? Does anybody believe Amani Awarie, who's been absolutely atrocious, to be able to cover those two players, do you? does anybody believe that it's Aubrey Pleasant's fault that Amani Awarie is always doing penalties, offsides, pass interference, won't turn his head around? I mean, yes, I guess that could be attributed to a little to him, but man, I actually thought Aubrey Pleasant was one of the better coaches for this football team because he, he's getting orange juice out of a rock. Sometimes, when you look at this, I definitely felt this. Could this be a warning shot to the players? 100%. Could it be a warning shot to Aaron Glenn? It, sh it absolutely should be. Now, we've seen the scene last year where Aubrey Pleasant was going down the throat of Jeffrey Okuda because Jeffrey Okuda got beat at the beginning of the year, and I approved it. I approved that. And watching Akuda shine from last year, I feel has a lot to do with the coaching of Aubrey Pleasant. He was to be the guy who takes over the defense in 2023. Now, make no mistake about it. The Lions are probably going to do a whole different defense when this season's over. Aaron Glenn's probably gone, and they're probably going to get a, get away with a lot of these coaches. So if that is the case, and that is what they're going to do, I don't have much of a problem. You can't fire everybody right now. Somebody's got to be able to coach. I don't like the fact that you're hiring friends. I think Aaron Glenn deserves a lot of blame. I think he does deserve a lot of blame because these play calling is ridiculous. When you're consistently blitzing, 
every single play and you know they're blitzing, is that on the defensive backs coach or is that on the play call itself? When you can't set the edges, is that on on the defensive backs coach or is that on the defensive coordinator? I'm going to call that on the defensive coordinator. I think it's booty cheeks to point the finger at Aubrey Pleasant. I think I would have actually liked, in all honesty, if there was going to terminate a coach, Aaron Glenn get get the axe and Aubrey Pleasant get the promotion. That's kind of what I would have probably done here at this point. It is a, a, a interesting move, to say the least. It really, really is. And I cannot wait to hear what Dan Campbell and Aaron Glenn's got to say about this move. I'm sure they had a conversation about this. This is what Jerry Jacobs had to say about this move. Jerry Jacobs speaking in his Twitter. Changed the way I looked at the game in so many different ways to help me get better and play well for our... I will always have respect and I love you. Wishing the best and I know you'll bounce back. That's regarding the Detroit Lions move of of firing Aubrey Pleasant. Mike Jones, he believes that Aubrey Pleasant will not remain unemployed long at all. Another assumption here, a tweet by Doug Hartley, and this is Jeff Risden. He says, would an assumption that this is related to Campbell saying the secondary was not physical, even though that was the game plan. Aubrey Pleasant possibly tell the defensive backs to do something different than head coach and defensive coordinator game plan. So weird to see him fired after the reports of how great things have been playing out. Um, Chris Burke states that still talks to me after I told him he'd have some fun covering the team. A lot of dismay from the beat writers from, uh, you know, Chris Burke to everybody out there right now to the players. Uh, Jeff Risden believes that Brian Duker will take over. Ironically enough, he was the guy, my source, that would have been fired today. So a guy who would have been fired is taking over for the DB's coach. Interesting moves when I when I go through all of these. What in the hell is going on? I I think they're looking for anything. They're kind of grabbing at sticks here. Uh, Dan Campbell, he's going to speak here in less than an hour. We'll be watching that to see what he's got to say. But I think I think this was a kind of a cowardly move. That's my personal opinion. Now, you can disagree with me. I think anybody can disagree with me. But that, I believe that's what this is. I think it's a cop-out move. And... Holding holding Aaron Glenn not accountable, I think somewhat of a cop out move. I think you you know it always starts at DC. Now last year Anthony Lynn was removed as OC. Now he wasn't fired, but he was removed. They're not doing that here. And there's a lot of problems schematically for this defense. When fans can look at what the play is gonna be, that's not good. That means you're predictable. That means it is easy to figure out. We all know this. And defensively, we've seen that. I don't think it's fair to have the 32nd ranked defense to look at the DB's coach and say, you're the problem. When a guy who apparently Jeff Riston said was told was going to get fired today is the guy who's replacing the guy who got fired today. How are the... Right now, Jerry Jacobs is not happy about this. How are the rest of the DBs going to think about this? They're going to think it's a cop out move. I think there's a lot of problems with this team, and I am now worried that the players are not going to buy into what Dan Campbell and AG is is bringing here. I think they're going to start lose faith now. Faith now, and there could be an internal battle, a little civil war that could take place, and that's not what you want to see. I think it's possible right now. I think it's going to get worse before it gets better. 
I think this defense is just going to have to be gutted by the end of the season. And I, you know, this this sucks from a fan standpoint. We don't want to be here at one and six and seeing this taking place. We don't want to see that. As a head coach, it's your responsibility to hire the correct people, and I think there's been mistakes made. I'm not necessarily saying Auburn Press it's the mistake. I think it's more there and Glenn. And uh, it's sad because I don't want to see a guy get sacked that doesn't deserve it, and then he goes to another team and it becomes a defensive coordinator and does well. We had an opportunity for to fire Aaron Glenn and see what it changes he could make to this defense with 10 games remaining. That's kind of what I was hoping. You know, at some point, you fire Aaron Glenn, see what Aubrey Pleasant could do. Could he change this defense around? We're not going to see that now. We're going to be stuck with the same defense for the next 10 games and pass in blames. I hate it. As a, as a Detroit Lions fan, I absolutely hate this. It stinks. It really smells bad. I don't like it. I'm concerned about this team going forward. One and six is bad, and now you start you start pointing blame at coaches who players really like, and you fire them. Man, oh man, that spells some bad news. That absolutely does. You know, this this is not a spot none of us wants to be in. We're we're all looking for answers here. We're all looking, you know, what can the Lions do here to get better? And right now, there's just no answers for this problem. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments section your feelings on this move. <laughs>